Matthew chapter 4. We will be beginning with the fifth verse. Amen. And I will be reading from the message translation of the Bible. Matthew. Chapter number four, beginning with verse number five. For the second test, the devil took him to the holy city. He sat him on top of the temple and said, Since you are God's son, jump. The devil goaded him by quoting Psalm 91. He has placed you in the care of angels. They will catch you so that you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Jesus countered with another citation from Deuteronomy. Don't you dare test the Lord, your God. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord is blessed. Talk, doctor. And for a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I think that we can all agree that living the life of a servant that is truly striving daily for the holiness of God is not an easy life. Amen. Honestly, my brothers and my sisters, the call to serve is challenging. And many of us can testify after many years of laboring and sacrificing that this call to serve God and his people is not as painless or as carefree as we thought it was. When we were on the outside looking in, we confidently or overconfidently would think to ourselves, that was easy. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. Yeah. Or we look at somebody else engaging in ministry and we think to ourselves, I can do it better than they can. Uh -huh. We anticipated that folk would lovingly receive us when we came and gave our confession of faith as we embraced and, up and took up the mantle of salvation. And we later thought we would be accepted and we would be heard as we grasped the call of leadership in the Lord's church. Well, However, we have learned from experience that this calling to serve people is way more than what we anticipate. It is way more involved and challenging than most people think. Well, We must remember that the call to ministry is a call to serve, not to be served. As laborers, we will always be accepted, but we must remember that ministry is a call to serve, not to be served. Uh -huh. As exhorters of the gospel, people will always want to hear what we got to say, but ministry is a call to serve, not to be served. We, not, we may not feel accepted. Even in the household of faith. 
But we must remember no matter how we feel, the ministry of the call to serve and, to, and not to be served. The folks we are serving may try to run us away, but we must remember that ministry is a call to serve, not to be served. Let me simply encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, that no matter what you endure in ministry, hold on, hold on. a little while longer. Right. For we know that we think they endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Tell your neighbor, say, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If I can take it a step further. Amen. Amen. It's truly an honor to serve in ministry yes. in the Lord's church. Yes. But ministry, my brothers and my sisters, gets burdensome. It's not easy. It gets challenging, and many times it can become exhausting, and it can be a lonely road. However, my brothers and my sisters, even though ministry is challenging, exhausting, and can be a lonely road, as we discussed last week, you cannot take the easy way out. We must continue to remember God and stay obedient no matter what life throws out of the way. I'm going to say that one more time. We must continue. To remember God. Yes, sir. And stay obedient no matter what life throws our way. And remember that being a servant is a call to work. Amen. And this work. Is not always accepted. Come on, son. This work that we do is not always appreciated, but it's necessary. Yes, yes, yes. In a world full of opportunities to serve, in a world filled with challenges as we serve, we sometimes are tempted to utilize unauthorized shortcuts at the expense of biblical accuracy and spiritual acceptability as we try our best to position ourselves in positions that we covet, in results we think we want, and the results we have convinced ourselves that God wants. Mm. Honestly, when we look at ministry opportunities, we are tempted to gauge the success of a ministry by the number of people connected to it. Wow. <laughs> and we also gain success by the number of folks patting us on the back. All right. When in all actuality, we should be gauging the strength of the ministry on the biblical literacy of the people Amen. and the spiritual strength of the people and ultimately we must ask the question is God the pleased? Amen. Sometimes we look for the approval of other folk when we try to convince them that God has truly called us to serve. However, beloved, if God has called you, you don't have to prove anything Amen. to anyone. Amen. 
All you have to do is be what God called you to be. Amen. Do what God called you to do as you walk in fellowship with Him. Amen. As we engage ministry, we have been given a roadmap called the Bible. And Deacon Baptist, it gives us the tools to serve successfully. This roadmap has been provided by God, and we should continue to follow it as we seek to do what the Master has called us to do, individually and collectively. Amen. Yes. We just understood. There's no need for us to use tactics okay. or methods not authorized by God All right. to get the work done. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because for the simple reason, Pastor, Sir. ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Untruths. Ain't nobody got time for that. Manipulation. Ain't nobody got time for that. Gimmicks from the pulpit. Ain't nobody got time for that. Misconceptions. Popularity contests. Misinterpretations of scripture. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. All right. All right. Walk in hand. Walk in hand. Time is filled yeah. with, with swift transition. Yes. No, 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 no move can stand. Yeah. But beloved, build your hopes not on gimmicks, but things eternal. Yeah. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Yes. Come on. Yes. Amen. Get in that book. Get in the book. As you know, this passage. Is pinned by Matthew, uh -huh. yeah. the former tax collector, yes, who later became one of the twelve. Right. Y'all with me? Right. We know this book is factual. It is well researched and as an inspired account of the life and events surrounding the life. Death and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. All right. Yes, sir. This writing by Matthew gives the reader confidence that Jesus Christ is the long awaited Savior. All right. And He is the promised one of God that gives us hope. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This gospel account by Matthew, my brothers and my sisters, was written. With the intention to draw the unbeliever and to encourage the believer that Jesus Christ is the one true redeemer who was prophesied about in the Old Testament. The most important thing we can take away from this text on today, listen to me closely, don't you dare test the Lord your God. All right. Stop. Don't do it. Tell your neighbors they don't do it. In the text. <laughs> By some means, the devil took Jesus into Jerusalem and had him stand on the top of the temple. The location, my brothers and sisters, from the top of the temple or pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem has not been identified with certainty. However, the historian Josephus said that the top of the temple was about 450 feet to the bottom of the Kindrum Valley. I want us to grasp that the devil was trying to undermine 
Jesus' relationship with the Father. My brothers and my sisters, this is something we experience multiple times daily. I want you to look at the story. The devil asked Jesus to prove to himself and to the world that he was the son of God. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down into the kingdom valley. To me understand that this was the devil's second attempt All right. yep. to entice Jesus. But he would do this by taking scripture out of context. All right. That's why we have to know our word. Amen. See, he was trying to be slick. And he quoted Psalm 91 for us, verses 11 and 12, where it states, He will order his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they will catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. If you notice later, we know this is a rematch. <laughs> and Satan thought he had Jesus on the ropes. See, mother, remember what Jesus told him prior. He said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. That comes from the mouth of God. I didn't want to So he figured he was going to use God's word for the next temptation. Ain't nobody got time for that. See, he figured Jesus lived on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So then he would confront Jesus with something from the Word. His own stuff. So Jesus, you claim to be the Son of God. Yeah. And you just claimed that you trust God's Word. Yeah. If this is so true, why don't you demonstrate that? All right. You are the son of God. Demonstrate that you are the son of God by testing your daddy. All right. <laughs> this was a trick, but it was a scriptural test. That's why when we take scriptural tests, we need to open the book. Oh, open yeah. <laughs> okay. Because this is open book. Test. He said, if you won't use your power to help yourself, then let your daddy use his divine power to help you. Because if you won't act independently of the Father, then let him act. All right. All right. Give your father a chance to fulfill the scripture I just quoted you. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, had Jesus done this, it would have been automatic proof to the people around the temple that he was the Messiah. And y'all with me? All right, okay. However, we understand based off of scripture that extraordinary signs, even when they come from God, rarely produce faith. Amen. All right. 
So you had to keep on doing tricks to keep them engaged. Even see dramatic signs only strengthen faith. Yes. For those who already believe. Yes. See, if we could travel forward a little bit from that event, we understand Jesus' miracles only strengthen the stance of the opposition and the haters. Remember, Jesus was led and declared in Matthew chapter 12, 39, only an evil, uh -huh. adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. Uh -huh. yeah. We know that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus was not having any parts of this nonsense. He simply said, I ain't got time for that. Right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Who is he? He therefore replied to Satan, It is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. See, understand for those who believe in God. We believe in God, right? All right. All right. It is more than evident that he's already proven himself. Amen. Yes, yes. All right. He is the Lord. All right. Yeah. He brought you from a mighty long way. Yeah. He woke you up this morning. Yeah. Clothed in your right mind. We already know that God's got the juice. Yeah. Yeah. See, Jesus already knew the Father cared. And protected him. And he knew that the father's care and protection could not be proved to others by any means but faith. Yes, yes. All right. And we know that faith That's right. is the substance of things not hopeful and the evidence yes. of things not seen. For by faith, the elders obtain a good report. Yeah, yeah. So only by faith that we will receive a good report. All right. So by this we understand as we serve the true and living God, we should walk by faith and not by sight. We are to be obedient and authentic bond servants that understand that acting contrary to God, being deceitful and manipulative, have no place in ministry. Amen. 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 So that's it. How do we avoid misrepresenting ourselves as we seek to be effective in ministry? Number one, remember that ministry is about being a servant, right. not being a performer. Come on. Number two, we must understand that ministry is not about thrilling people, but saving souls. Uh. And last but not least, we must actualize that ministry is about doing God's will, not drawing amazement from people. Amen. We have to understand as we engage ministry that God's way is the only way. We go forth in the power of the true and living God because God's way is the only way. We leave stuff behind and we follow him daily God's way my brothers and my sisters is the only way we must be loving vessels in spite of any difficulties we might face because God's way is the only way we must be authentic in all we do because God's way is the only way as we carry the 
bloodstained banner, we must do it in excellence. Because God's way is the only way. We must be authentic and transparent because God's way is the only way. We must strive to walk in fellowship with God and fellowship with one another because God's way is the only way. See, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what the glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. See, when we get depleted, we must trust him and obey him. When our paths don't seem clear, we must trust him and obey him when we're taken to the top of the temple and tempted to jump off and be a clown. We must trust him and obey him. When the outlook seems unpromising, when we feel uncertain, when we feel unfulfilled, when we feel like we are being persecuted, when the way we do church has changed, we must trust him and obey him. When hope seems distant, we must continue to trust him and obey him. In the midst of financial drought, we must trust him and obey him. See, when we find ourselves all alone, we must continue to trust him and to obey him. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, see, in him I found a resting place. In him I found a true redeemer. In him I found shelter in the time of storm. In him, I find joy, unspeakable joy. In him, I found a love so tender and a love so sweet. In him, I found a true guide and a resting place. See, I may have struggles. My cross, I will carry till I See Jesus. See, I may not be perfect, but my cross I will carry till I see Jesus. See, my friends may be few, but my cross I will carry till I see Jesus. I may have some aches, I may have some pains, but my cross I will carry till I see Jesus. I may be talked about, lied on, misrepresented, but my cross I will carry till I see Jesus. Though no one join me, still I will follow the world behind me, the cross before me, because I decided to follow Jesus. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Tell your neighbor, no turning back. No turning back. My brothers and my sisters, if you are weary, press on a little while longer. If life is unpredictable, press on a little while longer. If the load is heavy and hard, to bear. Press on. Don't give up. Just a little while longer. You may feel that time is not on your side. But press on a little while longer. If you lost some momentum, take a break. Get your breath. Then press on a little while longer. If you feel like giving up. If you feel like Going in the town. Don't stop. Don't quit. Press on. A little while longer. I want to live above the world. Though Satan darts and me are hurled. For faith has caught a joy so sad. Lord, plant my feet on the higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith, on heaven's table and a higher plane, I have found. Lord, plant my feet 
on hollow higher ground. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to take off. Tell your neighbor, I'm going higher. As a servant, we are about to take off. As a family, we're about to take off. On our jobs, we're about to take off. In ministry, we're about to take off. And not me, influences, we're about to to take off in openness we're taking off in righteousness we're taking off in witnessing we're taking off in relationships we're taking off my anointing my gifts my talents we are about to take off amazing grace how sweet the sound the same like me see I want to talk but now we fly we fly but now I see we're taking off. Thank you. Thank you. Manipulation. Ain't nobody got time for that. Misinterpretation of scripture. Ain't nobody got time for that. In authenticity, ain't nobody got time for that. We got to be on the battlefield, equipped and ready to go for our Lord. So how do we avoid misrepresenting ourselves as we seek to be effective? In ministry. Number one, I want you to remember that ministry is about being a servant, not a performer. Number two, we must understand that ministry is not about moving the crowd, but saving souls. Amen. And last but not least, we must actualize that ministry is about doing God's will, uh -huh. not drawing amazement from the crowd. Yes, sir. See, that's what I got time for. Yes, yes. I got time for that. <laughs> we're servants. We're about saving souls, and we're about doing God's will. The doors of the church are open. Thank <laughs> you.